Welcome back to the Combat Chatters YouTube channel. I haven't said that in a while, but you know, some stuff happened over this weekend that I feel like I need to make a video about. Obviously, the King, Francis Ngannou's return, PFL debut, taking on the PFL champion, Ranin Ferreira. We are going to talk about some other things that happened on that card as well, a little bit about my thoughts on a few of the fires. Just the main card, basically, because I'm not going to sit here and bore you with a bunch of people none of us have ever heard of. But I will talk about AJ McGee, Paul Hughes. Paul Hughes, you know, trying to trying to be almost like the biggest Conor McGregor, like the biggest Irish fighter since Conor McGregor, especially in this MMA scene. And he is on his way to doing that with some of the fights he can have. He took on AJ McGee, you know, a big name over there in the BFL the BFL, the PFL, Bellator crossover. And uh, yeah, he took him on. AJ McGee, in my opinion, uh, ever since that second Pitbull fight, just hasn't really lived up to the hype of what we all thought he would be. I, you know, I thought he was a sort of young, explosive fighter who has really good wrestling, really good striking. But, you know, you kind of peel back the layers. And I think he's managed to kind of push his way through to this point out of just pure athleticism. Caught Pitbull with a, I think it was, you know, that fight was so long ago now. I think he caught Pitbull with a, I know he hurt him with a shot first and then got the submission win, maybe a head kick or a knee or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. And, you know, everyone was on the bandwagon then talking about, I think he was 26 when that happened, how far he can go into the UFC if we can push him into there after his contract finishes. But he's been a bit up and down since then. Yeah, I know he struggled. He had a crossover fight with a guy from Ryzen that he did win. But Paul Hughes really, really looked solid in this fight. Great takedown defense, solid striking. And in my opinion, managed to pretty much, yeah, I gave him all three rounds, managed to win every, every round against AJ McGee. I don't know how it went to the split decision. And now... You know, Paul Hughes has a massive fight ahead of him. Ask Conor McGregor to be in his corner. Um, I'm not really <laughs> looking forward to none of these, none of these better tall fights. Really, there's some that they can put on that excites me, like the co-main event in, on this card. Chris Cyborg was obviously one. Which I think she was the first time she was an underdog in like 14 years. So there was some hype around some other fights in, on this card. Then the fight after AJ McGee, I'm not even going to talk about because. Again, never heard of any of these guys. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear about it. Uh, Johnny Eblen, Fabian Edwards, obviously English guy, Leon Edwards' brother. I actually been to see, see Fabian fight live. I've been a fan, fan of Fabian since for quite a while. He fought fought a guy quite local to me that kind of the gyms around here know a little bit. Um, I think his name's Kent Co Copenhagen or Copenhagen or something, something like that. Got armbarred by Fabian Edwards. Uh, but yeah, always been a big fan of Fabian. I've always liked him because the finishing potential seems to be a lot there, a lot more there than his brothers does. Um, but you know, now we can look at it. It's just because he's been fighting bums, and that is why he's been getting these finishes. Because in this fight and in the last Johnny Eblen fight, I know he did get finished in the last one, but in this one especially. Just all the same problems Leon has, to be fair. It was a bit like watching a rinse repeat of the Bilal Mohamed leon Edwards fight, where Fabian, when he was letting shots go, he did look like he could always sort of hurt, hurt Johnny Eblen and get him out of there at any point, but just not enough urgency. He always worried about the takedown. Eblen putting it on an absolute snooze fest for everyone to enjoy. I really, really do not do not like Eblen's fighting style. Everyone got so excited when he was out here finishing people. And then, you know, UFC sloppy seconds in Sanginai comes out of nowhere and should have got the win against him. Looked terrible against Fabian, so I think that's kind of the hype train died down on Johnny Eblen if he could do well in the UFC. I think, you know, maybe he could possibly get top 10, but he's not beating any top five guys in that middleweight division. And that's not saying much because the UFC's middleweight division is not in a pretty place right now. But yeah, Johnny Eblen, I know the Weasel said that he thinks Johnny Eblen would beat Israel Adesanya, which or oh, thinks he maybe the only one he could beat is Israel Adesanya, which, you know, I'm not calling the Weasel out because he's got a lot more credentials in this sort of space than I do, but that is crazy. You know, he looked, Izzy looked as good as he ever really has as in his last fight against Drickus, just being able to defend the takedowns out in the middle as well as on the fence but did get submitted in the end Johnny Eblen isn't pushing no one in that sort of thing he's around this level of being in Bellator I think that's been proven with most of his fights does get the win gets another title defense on his UFC on his UFC belt he wishes it was UFC on his PFL belt 
And uh, yeah, I don't really know what they can do with him next. I would like to see the Impa fight again. I think Impa's at light heavyweight right now. Um, yeah, I'm, there's an undefeated Russian fighter who's just come back in that weight class. Well, I can't remember the name. Not not really too interesting in any of this. We are going to talk a bit about UFC today as well. So we'll quickly move on to the co-main event. Chris Cyborg against Larissa Pashenko. Pashenko opened as the favourite, first betting favourite in... 14 years against Chris Cyborg, which is crazy, you know, not even Nunes was opened as the favourite, and uh, yeah, it was a decent fight, I don't know, really know why Pachenko was the favourite, even going into the fifth round, she was still a favourite on the live odds as well, even though she probably lost three rounds by that point already, which was a bit crazy, but I did like Pachenko's stand-up, she might seem to be on some interesting sort of stuff to help her get to this level, because, you know, previously, before like the big win she's had uh big wins she's had outside the UFC previously she did have a couple fights in the UFC had no sort of finishing potential didn't look very good at all come out you know and she's had great fights with Kayla had now a pretty decent fight with Chris Cyborg Cyborg really just showing her experience in this one how many high level fights she's really been in managing to mix in the grappling with the striking didn't fall into any of Pashenko's traps really where Pashenko really was trying to push the pace and sort of get in Cyborg's face, which is crazy to see because that is Cyborg's game and calling Cyborg on. I did think it was cool how Cyborg was backing up and Pachenko was trying to really egg her on. And, um, you know, you don't see many people try to get that fight out of Cyborg and don't get it because they're getting the better out of it. So Cyborg did get the win, mixed it in with the grappling. And now I'm finally going to get onto the, you know, the interesting one. Now we're all here. I've bored you all in the six minutes, six and a half minutes so far. But Francis Ngannou comes back against Renan Ferreira, a guy who everyone sees to be this absolute killer in the PFL. Six for eight. I think he's got the longest reach in MMA right now over all boards. And really, a lot of people thinking that he might go out here and be able to get a finish over Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou, I think the last time I was making videos was probably around the time he went into boxing and, you know, did himself proud in the Fury fight and then kind of got exposed a bit in the Anthony Joshua fight. And we all did wonder how he would come back after such a big KO loss. We don't see very, especially someone like Francis Ngannou never even being dropped in his career, then going on to get him brutally KO'd where he was down for a long time, needed oxygen to help him come back around. You know, it wasn't a very pretty one at all. But comes back and doesn't even really get his chin tested, to be fair. And before we get into too much of the actual fight and breaking down the very short sort of span and what happened, I just want to give my hats off. Everyone knows how much I love Ngaru. I think that to come back after what he's been through, let alone getting knocked out in the biggest fight of your life in front of millions of people, a few months later to have your 18-month-year-old son sadly pass away. And it's, just, it's a... It's a hard thing to even talk about because, you know, it's just it's such a horrible thing. It's something you can never imagine. My brother recently having a kid as well. It's just like it puts it into perspective more that like you just think like that thing was just that kid was just given to him and it was taken away to even come back to the sport and be able to make a successful comeback and be like, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Be so he was just dealt with it like so professionally, so well dealt with it like a true true man you know like didn't didn't let it bother him got in there dedicated this win to his son and I just I just want to say big hats off to Francis Ngannou truly one of the best heavyweights we have ever seen and in my opinion you put any prime heavyweight against that man I don't know if they can beat him that's just my thoughts on on all of it getting into the fight Renan Ferreira, you know, I think it was kind of a pick and maybe Renan Ferreira was just the opening favour, which I completely understand. You know, I did think France was going to win because I think in these fights, you need to kind of just think like, who's been at the top level? Who's beat five former world champion, UFC world champions before? Who's got losses in the last few years that you can look back on their records and just see holes? Renan Ferreira's been taken down, finished before. There's debates to even really see if he's the best heavyweight. There's a heavyweight who's beat him in the rankings, around his ranking as well. So, I personally thought France win. I actually thought he would win the way he did. I think he'd mix in the takedowns. But it just felt so good to see him back in MMA, you know, coming back. 
taking leg kicks, giving leg kicks. The, the way that guy kicks your legs is brutal. You do not want to get your leg kicks by that bloke. Just swinging Pereira leg completely in the air, taking him off balance. And he did get taken off balance himself, landing, trying to land some big shots off a leg kick he received and then dipped under a punch for a great time takedown. And... Yeah, gets the takedown, looks dominant in every position and just starts... No, he gets caught in a triangle first. The triangle almost gets lodged up by Renan Ferreira. Does look kind of tight, but Ngana kind of stacks against the fence and punches his way out of it, which, I mean, at heavyweight, I guess that can work more. I wouldn't suggest doing that if you're a featherweight or, you know, in the lower weight classes. But punches his way out of the submission, goes to side control. Ferreira gives up his back and Ngana isn't looking for no jiu-jitsu. He's looking to punch that man's face through the canvas and that... You know, that is what he did. I think I think Dan Mergliata was forgot he was the ref for a second and thought he was one of us watching on the TV because Ferreira went out after the second or third ground and pound shot to the side of the ear and then he kind of limps out and then the shots to the back of the head start coming. I know in that position you can't really help shots to the back of the head. But, you know, he once it's that bad, Mergliata's got to get in a bit quicker, to be fair, but it is what it is. I don't mind him just... Nganu back with a massive win. Interesting to see what he does next. And that's what we'll end on is what what I think he will do next. Obviously, there's fights in the PFL. You can kind of... It's a hard one because then you're kind of looking for guys out and around that guy. I know he called out the Dutch kickboxer, Dutch kickboxer Rico Van something something. I can't remember the guy's second name, but glory glory kickboxer. I think he's a heavyweight. Trains with Tom Aspinall. You guys know the guy I'm on about. I'll call him Rico. Calls him out. Imagine if he goes out and manages to somehow win a glory title as well. So, you know, almost beat the lineal heavyweight champion in the world in Tyson Fury. Still, debatably, never lost a belt in the UFC, just left the company. So he currently beat the guy who's just about to fight for a title and breezed him about four years ago. So Ngannou, no heavyweight in the UFC can say they're better than Ngannou because he has beat that the guy who's getting the title shot, the number one contender right now, or the so-called number one contender. Aspinall is the guy up there for me in the UFC. It's out of him and Ngannou, who's the best heavyweight on the planet right now. Sadly, we'll never find out. I'm not going to even entertain any of that. I think Ngannou would breeze past John Jones. That's just my thoughts. Tom is an interesting fight, but I still, I think I still do favour Ngannou. I think I, don't, I, I need to see Ngannou get punched. That's the difference, and that is why I'm going to say this. I think we need to see Ngannou box one more time. I don't know if anyone else agrees with this. There's one fight. Two fights that stand out for me, but one fight because of the name, because it generates money. Francis deserves all the money fights he can get. And Deontay Wilder, for me, is the fight he should try and aim for next. His last fight in boxing, an embarrassing loss, I'm sure, and Garner is chomping at the bit to try and get that loss back. Not obviously the fight against AJ back. I doubt he wants that fight back. But he wants to go into boxing and sort of redeem his name. Did so well in the first fight that, you know, a lot of people were actually picking him in the Anthony Joshua fight. And, uh, yeah, that went horribly wrong for him. So if he can come back against a Wilder, I know people kind of say that Wilder looks so washed now. Is there any point? But, you know, Wilder's the one who's been a boxing world champion for so many years. So, you know, it's not... No detriment for Ngannou looking for that fight. That's a big fight. That's still an even fight on on the sort of the matchmakers. No one can go in and say Ngannou's on massive favour in that fight because last time he stood in a boxing ring, he got, didn't even land a punch on the guy. He got breezed through. So I think the Wilder fight he can chase. I do like the Rico fight to try and but go become a glory glory champion as well, which just sounds mental, but it's Ngannou, man. He can just kind of do what he wants at this point. And if he does do that, he'll probably go down as the best combat athlete of all time. So I would understand if he chases that. I think he might go to boxing again. There's not loads of fights to get for him outside the PFL. So, so fighters that you can get from outside the PFL to come and do MMA, unless they have ridiculous money and can convince Tyson Fury to just jump in an octagon with... Francis and Garner, which let's be real, is not happening. So yeah, interesting. Let me go, let let me know your thoughts on it, guys, because you know there's so many different ways he could go with his career next. Even if he, you know, he don't have to fight. I spoke about what what he's been through at the moment. He wanted to dedicate that win to his son Kobe. So rest in peace, Kobe. Um, so he might even step away after that one. You know, you never know. So. Yeah, let me let me know what you guys think he's going to do. 
I'm going to be back now uploading, I'm going to say, at least three times a week. That's what I'm aiming for. Try and get in a big pod out now and again. I know I've been away for so long. I'm going to make a video. Tomorrow's video is going to be not why I've been away for so long, because if I'm honest, the main reason why is I, I can just be a lazy motherfucker sometimes. But I'm going to be talking about sort of why my love for MMA has been sort of dwindling out a little bit, the sort of cards we've been getting over the last year. And I'm going to compare which has had a better year out of boxing or MMA. I don't know if that'll be tomorrow's video or Thursday's video, maybe Friday's video. But yeah, you guys will see. Keep an eye on the channel. I'm looking to do some new things now. I really want to get this kickstarted and going again. So subscribe, like, share around with your friends to get more content. And I hope you enjoyed today's video.